Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Credible Crypto here on Twitter reminding us of something very, very important. I know, uh, you know, a lot of you guys are probably looking at the news coming out and wondering to yourself, okay, now what? What do I do? Am I diversified enough? How do I know my coin is not going to be next? Well, back in October, okay, October 1st, 2020, criminal charges were brought against Arthur Hayes, the owner of the largest crypto derivatives exchange in the world, BitMEX by the DOJ. Remember where we are at this stage in the cycle. Don't let the FUD shake you out. So, you know, here's just a, a little bit of a visualization of what happened at that point in time. We were getting back up to resistance levels back in late 2020, and then the market, boom, just kind of shot up, popped off top. We saw new all-time highs for altcoins and new all-time highs for Bitcoin. But in and around this period here, owner of BitMEX, a leading Bitcoin exchange, faces criminal charges. Founder and executives of offshore cryptocurrency derivatives exchange charged with violation of the Bank Secrecy Act. So, um, guys, again, this was uh, this was happening in the U.S. The DOJ was after BitMEX. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it was a bit of an issue, but did it affect the overall crypto market? Clearly not. So just another thing to be paying attention to uh, in this upcoming bull run. I mean, luckily for us, XRP is faring quite well. As of the time of this recording, we got XRP trading at about 52 cents in this morning's video, which I will link up here in the top right hand corner. If you guys didn't catch it, we were talking a little bit about some updates with regards to Binance and the Coinbase uh, suits, the lawsuits that are now being filed by the SEC and some of the coins that have been targeted now. This bull run is going to be very different from the last. I know a lot of you guys hold XRP. I mean, probably everybody who is watching the uh, the channel because my, my cryptocurrency channel largely focuses on XRP. Uh, it is, full disclosure, my biggest position in crypto. It is also one of the cryptocurrencies that is the closest compared to all the other cryptocurrencies in the space to clarity right now because we're um, you know just on the verge of hearing from the judge. We're really on that precipice, right, to get that verdict to give us confidence. And, uh, you know, XRP has already been moving in the meantime, been moving to the upside over the last couple of weeks. On top of which, I've noticed that even outlets like Coindesk have changed their tune on XRP. I don't know if you guys remember back in, you know, 2018, 2019, we'll say Coindesk was very negative on Ripple and XRP, very negative. And we kind of coined them Fuddesk for a while there. Well, now their tune has changed. XRP is outperforming the rest of the cryptocurrency sector with a 12.8% month over month increase. This is a direct report from Coindesk here. Even amid a market contraction, Ripple remains hopeful in its battle with the SEC. Let's take a look at today's chart of the day. Ripple has outperformed the rest of the currency sector in the Coindesk Market Index with a 12.8% month-on-month increase, even after the broad market contraction at the beginning of the week. After a rock star start to the year, XRP has seen a change of more than 50% year-to-date and remains above 50 cents. Meanwhile, according to Kaiko data, the open interest in XRP rose after the last week of May, hitting yearly highs of more than $500 million. So what's driving all the hype? Ripple Labs made headlines this year as they continue to battle the SEC. While there is no set date for a judgment, the community remains hopeful that one should come before the end of the year. Weeks ago, a federal judge ruled that the SEC would not be able to seal documents tied to former official William Hinman's 2018 speech on crypto and securities. The deadline for the SEC to provide these unredacted documents is June. 13th. Separately, Ripple acquired Swiss blockchain custody firm Medico for $250 million recently and launched a CBDC platform for the development of CBDCs and stablecoins. That's it for today's chart of the day. I'm Jen Sinassi, and we'll see you tomorrow to unpack more of the data behind top news stories. Well, thank you, Jensen Assey, for that. But there you have it. Ripple up 12.8% month over month. Uh, they talk a little bit about the Medico purchase, uh, you know, the fact that they're battling the SEC and being quite successful at it. So, you know, the uh, the Ripple narrative has changed a lot since the beginning, you know, when Bitcoin maximalists and, uh, you know, everybody under the sun seemed to be like, hey, look, see, see, these guys are bad. They're getting sued. Well, the narrative over two years has changed dramatically, and uh, I think we are seeing what the SEC's true motives really are. As I was mentioning in this morning's video, if you guys didn't catch that video, I do urge you to watch it. Um, you know, they are looking at the industry as something to corral. They do not want any Tom, Dick, and Harry under the sun to create an ICO and for retail to get rich off it overnight. They want to stop meme coins and, uh, you know, the hype surrounding that kind of culture 
90% of altcoins will be dead before this bull run really ends. This is a prediction from XRP King 81 on Twitter. Only a few will survive, and then he names a few. I'm not uh, saying that these ones are going to be the ones or not going to be the ones or whatever, but he names a few and some others, he says. That's why I'm not diversifying into crap coins and Casper, my ticket to financial freedom. Gary is coming for everything and only real utility will survive the bloodbath that's to come. Now, I agree with this uh, to a degree. Actually, I, I agree with most of what he's saying here. Diversifying is also my strategy in this coming bull run. And guys, I am going to be sharing my trading journey on my Patreon site. It is only $5 a month. So for the entire year for $60, you can see what I'm going to be trading. I'm going to be posting videos on the day that I trade. Uh, and these are going to be short term holds. I mean, we're going to see how this uh, market unfolds. Uh, my strategy, though, thank goodness, before, uh, you know, all this uh, SEC stuff was going on, my strategy, though, was to diversify. And so I'm thankful for that because now the SEC is coming out guns a blazing and we're going to see where this goes. I'm also going to be talking about, uh, you know, my main picks, my XRP, my Algorand, uh, my VeChain, my HBAR, some of the bigger positions that I hold to. And of course, Bitcoin, uh, you know, the market is going to be moving in interesting ways this time around. So for only $5 a month, you guys can catch me on my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash working money channel, because this could be the outcome that we see, right? Diversification, because if 90% of altcoins die because of the SEC, well, you don't want to be caught holding the bag. You don't want to be caught with your pants down in this coming bull run. Of course, XRP, a safe bet considering where we're at. And considering all the developments we've been seeing for Ripple, we're at Money 2020 in Amsterdam this week. Drop by the booth to talk about how traditional finance can use crypto and blockchain technology to innovate and grow. So, you know, despite what's happening in the United States, Ripple is still doing what they do best, providing utility for a market that definitely needs it. Here's uh, just some photos from Money 2020. Also, note some of the participants here. JP Morgan and Google, you guys can catch that over there. JP Morgan and Google are also present at Money 2020. So, you know, Ripple is in the ring with big players. Time and again, we talk about Ripple XRP and the value that's going to be derived to the XRPL. Once we see uh, this new transition and once that has completed, we're still at the beginning phases of this, right? You know, um, everybody, it's, and it's hard to coordinate because countries around the world need to coordinate a new financial system. We've heard about ISO 20022 and how that integration is being phased in slowly with, uh, you know, different countries around the world deciding on their own timelines, but generally giving us until November of 2025. Um, and, you know, I talked a little bit about how Ripple can benefit from this as well, right? Even though there is no such thing as an ISO 20022 compliant coin, uh, the concept of ISO 20022 integration really does behoove a company like Ripple because now banks are realizing, okay, here's the standard we need to get on. What's our, you know, what's our best bet? And Ripple's like kind of right there in front of their faces. Hey, look, we can integrate you guys. So it's going to be great uh, for so many different reasons, which has gotten the speculation, price speculation specifically, really ramping up. This one from Michael Branch, a study aimed to ascertain fair market valuation has revealed that yes, the fair market value of XRP spans anywhere from $3,500 per coin to $22,000 per coin. Now, I know uh, some people are probably loving this. Other people are probably saying, why Working Money Channel are you promoting this garbage? And I know there's two sides of the fence here. I'm just bringing it to you guys. I want to go over it and have a discussion about it. So we know about the buyback committee. If you guys uh, haven't caught uh, you know, previous videos I've done on that, I'll see if I can find a more recent one and I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner, uh, which includes, okay, so it's Jimmy Valley, Val Hill Capital, Molly Elmore, Val Hill Capital's blockchain business CMO. They all recently published a comprehensive two year research white paper. The study aimed to ascertain the fair market valuation of XRP, revealing that its fair market value spans anywhere between $3,500 and $22,000. Uh, you guys have probably seen this uh, image before, this PDF. They talk about pipeline flow model, the Athian Michnik model, the 99-year Golden Eagle model, discounted cash flow model, collateralization, collateral, ugh, excuse me, collateralization model, and quantum liquidity model. The study also aims to expose the damaging effects of the SEC lawsuit. So they go into a bunch of different things in here. I do, in fact, have the Molly Elmore tweet here, giving us an insight on what they think 
fair market value is for XRP. This question is more complex than it sounds and led by a small group of people on nearly a two year journey picking up more along the way to support the effort. Here is a thread guys on fair market value. As we know, uh, in December of 2020, the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple and this did in fact decrease market price. We can see it uh, dramatically in the charts and uh, if you compare this to any other cryptocurrency at that time, we did not see the same dip, at least not this dramatically for any other cryptocurrency. So this was the time that the SEC decided to sue Ripple. And I've always said, you know, had this never happened, we would have been up here at this point. And even in a spec run, we probably could have gotten higher than $1.96. So what was really going on here in quarter three of 2021? Jimmy and the team at Valhill Capital decided to send a proposal to the US Central Bank, the Fed, offering to sell their XRP and that of others who wanted to participate at a substantially higher price than available on exchanges. The point was to bring attention to the appearance of regulatory capture and a discussion around those implications. Logical questions then arose. If the SEC has harmed retail holders through their lawsuit, how could one calculate the financial damages? How much did the lawsuit hinder adoption of the XRPL from its ability to realize its intended use case? If the potential use case had been reached, what would the valuation of XRP have been? This is when the concept of fair market value entered the discussion and how it differs from market value. So shortly after Val Hill Capital invited a larger group of people to come together, this was the confidential committee. The goal was to unite and create a plan to address the collusion. Uh, you know, in the fall of 2022, the confidential committee formed a smaller valuation committee of people experienced in quantitative and financial valuation. So they got together their experts. Six different valuation models were built over the span of several months. The valuation committee made the decision to share our findings along the way. And guys, here is what they found. So looking at global transactional volume, global money supply, daily transaction value, projected economy uh, growth rate. Uh, so here just some, again, model inputs, XRP circulating supply. So definitely the real hard facts also play into this too. XRPL transactions per second discount rate and years until steady state. She goes on to say that they were criticized. Much to our surprise, the results of the first set of models led new people to step up and contribute additional models. This confirmed we made the right decision contrasting the transparency of our process to build in public to the secretive back smoky room process being undertaken by our public servants at the SEC. The effort was expanding. The paper we have released today would have been quite different if we had waited to share. One misconception around this effort was that the models are price forecasts designed to mislead people or give retail holders a dose of hopium. So just to put things into perspective, Molly Elmore here is saying, guys, this is not uh, a price projection. This is a price model based on uh, factors that they see as relevant to the to um, you know XRP and the XRP ledger and Ripple's uh, business model to give us a sense of what XRP could should be at the price. So this is not a price projection, not a price prediction necessarily. She goes on to say, however, among the people who took the time to really understand the output from the models, the opposite conclusion became evident. So you know people are you know in a lot of ways people are upset that uh, XRP has not performed, uh, you know, maybe the way it should have been performing in the last run. This time it's going to be different, but, uh, you know, even just to take a look at some of these methodology comparisons, store of value, transaction speed, big bang, discount rate, virtuous cycle, the 2030 valuation, all the money, uh, and 10% adoption for 2030. So you guys can see they've really kind of taken their time to analyze each um, each issue here, each facet of this valuation to come to a conclusion that is, you know, more or less um, logical, I guess, based on these elements. In that timeline of events, the XRPL would have been unencumbered by the stigma and confusion around the classification of XRP. The range of simulated output values from the six models is very wide. Two dominant and connected variables have a powerful influence on the price. So what are we referring to here? We refer to those variables as transaction value and store of value. Both are addressed in great detail throughout the paper as it is the concept of the virtuous cycle, the dynamic relationship between those two variables. So giving us the virtuous cycle flywheel, guys, as XRP adoption increases for payments and digital asset transactions, XRP price increases. This is something that, uh, you know, is a fundamental kind of point that, uh, you know, we've all, all always kind of known for XRP and the XRP ledger. Uh, more value, right? More driven value, more demand means price goes up. Competing forces of increasing adoption and store of value demand lead to exponential price increase. So people holding XRP uh, and not relinquishing their XRP uh, definitely means there is less supply in the market, which also could produce more demand. Uh, price increase drives up demand to store value, reducing availability and supply for transactions. Uh, so new use cases emerge, Jevons paradox, 
driving vertical and horizontal adoption growth. So, you know, they look at a lot of things here to our knowledge. No other analysis of this scope has been done in the digital asset space. A diverse team with a variety of professional backgrounds came together to volunteer and build a series of quantitative models to understand the value drivers for the digital currency, guys. And here we have it. Six quantitative models uh, were built using various industry accepted approaches. Assumptions varied, but all assume that XRP, the XRP ledger, will be a widely adopted layer one to move global value. So we basically have to move on that assumption, okay? And there are a lot of assumptions here, but just hear me out. So they look at all these models, the Athi Michnik model, which came out in 2018, if you guys uh, remember that. Uh, I, I, oh, geez, they, they go into a lot of stuff here. I did a video on the uh, Athi Michnik model years ago. I'll see if I can find it. I'll link it up here. Uh, Bakes pipeline flow, collateralization uh, at, at 100%, at 10%, discounted cash flow at 1%, 2%, 3%. So, you know, they're looking at all these different scenarios uh, and where we could see XRP price go to based on this golden eagle of 2030 quantum liquidity. So, you know, a lot of these concepts are very foreign, but here they're looking at the modeled fair value uh, per XRP. And, you know, even at the low end here, they're looking at a $9.81 XRP, which for all intents and purposes, I think is, uh, you know, fairly conservative. If you ask me, I think that it is definitely very doable, you know, plotting a Fibonacci here on the chart, even just from former all time high to the low of the market. We have assumed in the past that XRP could go up as high as $13, give or take. So a $9 XRP, certainly uh, not out of the question, I don't think. And then we got other valuation models and these uh, numbers just kind of throw the uh, technical analysis out the window. Anywhere from 3,500, here we've got 4,800, 9,000, uh, 12,200 per coin, 21,900 per coin, all the way up to 122,000 and even $513,000 Per coin. Now, there has been some criticisms about this, of course. What is the real likelihood of this? How much should I believe this? And how long is this going to take too, right? If this takes 80 years, is it really worth it to, you know, think that my XRP is going to go up to uh, even 20,000 per coin? And so they've had different kinds of responses from this, regardless of what the various model simulates in terms of potential value. The fact remains unchanged. The years that the XRPL has been under the dark cloud of the lawsuit cannot be recovered. Humans are resilient though and can overcome setbacks, but nearly three years of lost innovation on the XRPL are gone, which is not necessarily true because people have uh, in fact still been building on the XRP ledger, uh, but that, uh, you know, adoption certainly is gone. You know, the, the fact that we could have maybe seen cryptocurrency, the industry be leaps and bounds ahead of where they are today. That is certainly a possibility uh, because Ripple does play a big influence into this. I guess another way to look at it is that look at where the rest of the world is with regards to XRPL adoption. Uh, we're still waiting on the dragging feet of the SEC in order to get that full, you know, realized um, value from the XRP ledger once we do have clarity in the U.S., she goes on to say months after the analysis, discussion, and internal review, the confidential committee is pleased to release our paper titled A Comprehensive Approach to Determining the Fair Market Value of XRP. And guys, the paper is in the description of the video here. So I will link this in the description. And again, this is not a prediction, but people have been coming out, you know, saying XRP community is full of speculation. This is coming from Utility FTW on Twitter. Heck, I speculate all the time. But price speculation this deep requires multiple layers of assumptions, with each layer increasing the likelihood of error. And uh, as Molly Elmore said, this is not a prediction. This is a, um, you know, what could have been. But utility brings up a good point. If this, 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 and this happens, then XRP will be worth this. It's just impossible with any level of confidence to predict what will unfold with so many variables involved before entertaining a $3,000 to $500,000 XRP, be content with the possible reality of a $0 XRP. Guard your mind in your pocket against the reality first. Keep a $500,000 XRP moonbag, sure, but plan to live your life like you've already lost all your investment. I think this is kind of the best advice that, uh, you know, somebody could give here. Guys, never, ever assume that, uh, you know, any of these cryptocurrencies are going to go up to these exorbitant prices. I mean, it's a possibility, certainly a possibility. And we try to understand, you know, based on facts, where price could go, you know, based on history or based on facts or all these other factors. But to assume that this is going to happen 100%, 
I don't think is a good idea. More critics here like Jack making wild claims about XRP going up 7,000 X when it's locked in a lawsuit is far more damaging to the XRPL than anything the SEC can do. Explain why anyone would draw such a conclusion that any other project matters based on Molly's price logic. Hint, they wouldn't. Uh, so being critical there, Panos here even saying, you know, this is embarrassing, not just for the XRP community, but the industry as a whole. Imagine wasting so much time and effort on nonsensical and delusional predictions and models, valuations, instead of doing something actually useful for the ecosystem and the industry. Um, you know, I don't think that this is damaging so much as it is just an exercise in what we could in fact see. What could have happened? Again, not saying it will, and I always preface that, you know, on my channel, not saying it will, but you know, it's it's good to get the mind working and to get the brain going, but we cannot lose our grasp on reality. The reality is the SEC is going after most cryptocurrencies. XRP is on the last leg of a journey towards crypto clarity. We also know for a fact that XRP has been doing fairly well, despite the SEC's efforts to shunt certain cryptos to the side. And so then we have to ask ourselves, is this going to be XRP's rally? Is another coin going to perform even better than XRP? I keep saying we are in uncharted waters. Diversifying is going to be the key in this next bull run, but certainly XRP is going to do well. Personally, though, I don't think we're going to see a $500,000 XRP this time around. Maybe $9 or even $13. But you guys can follow me if you're interested. I am on Patreon. I will be getting into other coins, too, and will be sharing the trades on the days that they occur. Patreon.com slash Working Money Channel. That's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.